one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to start making this. Now, it might not seem like much. Like, it doesn't seem like a lot of polys. But that's really all the detail we're going to need. Um, as I said when in the previous video, when you're making a unique character such as a human being who hopefully everyone in the world knows, like myself, you would only need to get the really unique features of that person. And that would be my eyeglasses, my nose, my big ears, and my hair. And make sure the other unique features of my face are shown as well in the detail that they're supposed to be, such as my small eyes and my small mouth. So when we go over our character, we're going to do that. And there's plenty of ways to do that. First, we can actually you know, start editing and deleting edges off this face until we get the face we want, which does work. And, and I showed you examples of that, you know, how you can do that. Uh, another way you can do it is you can actually, let's get rid of this other side real quick. You can make this entire model a reference model, at least in Maya you can, by hitting this magnet up here. And it says it makes the object live. And what that means is you can now, everything you drag is going to snap to that model. And this is really helpful when you're creating polygons. It's kind of like a retopo tool, like topo gun, but in Maya. All we'd have to do then is just create um, our triangles on top of it. And if I can find the create poly tool, which has seemed to have escaped me, we can get to that. There we go, create polygon tool. So I'm just gonna start here and go, we'll go here, yeah, right there. Right here at the bridge of the nose. And where did first switch? So we're one, two, three, go over here to the top of the eye, then above the brow and to the forehead. So top of the eye, above the brow, top of the forehead. And boom, we have our polygon right there. But as you can see, it, it doesn't look very good. I mean, we, we haven't really created much right now. And we're going to have to split that just so it can appear correctly. Now, even though this is in wireframe, our stuff is still going to snap to it. So that's going to be really useful now that we can see our mesh. And I'm just going to keep going, and I'm going to keep creating my own polygons around here. And, you know, I'm going to check my reference, because I picked this up, and I drew over my face, so I could make sure I would get the detail where it's needed. So I'm going to check that, so I don't make any additional polygons that I don't really need. So where were we? Clearly, I'm going to have to push those edges down closer, because I just don't have that big of brows. And this polygon right here should be this one. So it, might, it should be going in a little bit. So let's go ahead and fix that. And you're going to have to drag using the middle of the gizmo. Otherwise, it won't snap to the live model. But if you just shake it a little bit, it'll get there. So we'll go right here. Bring this further down. There we go. And let's start creating more polygons. What should be the next one? Hmm, we can get the nose so we can finish up the eye. Let's go ahead and finish up the eye. This seems easy enough. We're going to go right down to the side of the nose. It's almost halfway in between my eye and the nose. As you can see right here. Uh, it's kind of just the lower left of it, so let's go for that. Like that spot better. Oh look, it seems like it's almost right there. So we got that area now. Where the next part I drew is to the bottom right of the eye. Almost under the eye directly. And we'll go over here just to make sure we got it. And we can always move this later when I actually apply my own face texture to it. That's another thing that can move in the pipeline. Your model can change when you're doing the texture. It sounds freakishly bad, but you can do it if you want to get the silhouette right, especially for low poly modeling. 
It's completely acceptable. I mean, this process doesn't take too long, and honestly, if I were doing it on my own without having to record and stop all the time, it would go a lot faster. And I would honestly just be clicking almost crazily, getting what I think the approximation is, and just moving it into place. So let's get this uh, cheek area down. It's going to stop. Where was it? So it's lined up with the nose, so I will get that right there. Seems pretty simple. Get the side of the nose, and right there. Almost at the cheek. I'm gonna press enter, just so we have it. And now we have a nice polygon right there. I'm gonna get these major areas we can work with. Like, let's go ahead and get that area straight down the nose and up. And we can always snap and uh, weld these vertices later. And there's a triangle here. Now, we want to get this area of the mouth and the bottom area of the chin. So let's go ahead and let's grab that. Oh, that's a split polygon tool. No, not the sculpt geometry tool. That will probably crash Maya. I don't have much luck with sculpting tools in Maya. If you want to chance that, go ahead, but it's not really good for high poly or low poly modeling. It used to be good when you're making like fake terrain, but nowadays most people just use ZBrush or another high poly sculpting tool like Modo or Mudbox. Let's see getting the face once down from that corner of the eye and this goes into the cheek. And I'm going to keep some holes there that's so I can just fill in the gaps later. Let's see about this nose. So it's going to be a quad the corner is going to be here. And this geometry might seem a little bit weird if you've never done low polys like this before. But this is so we can keep most of the face in quads. At least for right now. Consistently checking my reference where I drew the wireframe over my face so I make sure I'm getting the detail that I need. Because my personal instinct, like you saw in the last video, is just to keep detailing over and over and over and over again. And it's a hard skill to learn to know when you need to stop. And as you can see, I still haven't efficiently learned that. You know, I have to find ways to force myself to not over detail something. So this is one, two, three, four. Got it. And we're we're gonna move these areas along. So oh, that's the try right. Oh, that's the quad right there. We're going to have, looks like a triangle, come over here. It goes to the side of the eye. So let's get that. And let's finish up the top. else do we need? Bottom cheek area coming off the bottom triangle. Making sure to see how far it goes. So it almost goes to my ear. I'll be over here so making sure it's stretching the way it needs down to there and coming down and hitting the base of my chin. Is that a triangle? 
Yeah, that's a triangle. So this is going to come here. This is going to come down and go into this area. So let's go ahead and hide that reference for a second. Let's select all these and let's combine them. And let's merge these verts. If you only have two vert vertices selected, it's going to always merge them. And we can always check by watching the vert count up here. Like, see right now, it says I have three. If I press you know, my G key to poly merge again, it should get down to one. Same thing with up here, up here. And they'll average the area they should be combining to, or something else, but they're, they're so close right now, it, it doesn't really affect me too much. And like I said, we're going to be playing around with these tries and pushing some vertices around my face a little bit more. So don't worry too much. Like I said, this is a this is supposed to be a really quick process. And the last video I think combined when I recorded it is in almost forty something minutes, and that's with an introduction. And making a base mesh is really just something you're going to use to model your real models with. You shouldn't worry too much about you know details or proper edge flow, because that's not the model that's going to be animated in the end and you're really just using it as a guide for your reference and your other details. What the hell? Sorry, my iTunes is playing World War Z, the audiobook. So, um, again, just, you know, you're, when you're first modeling that, that mesh, think of it as just another reference. That's a great way to think of it. Think of it as another guide that you're going to use so you don't have to look at, you know, two two dimensional pictures and kind of like guide your way around. It's a 3D model that you're modeling around or you're fixing in order to be your mesh. Here we go. Now, you might be wondering, how is the mouth going to work? And this is something we were going to go over about how there's a lot of games that don't have moving mouths and they don't have moving eyes and they're just painted on and they'll do um, they'll swap textures not literally but they will almost use like an animated gif style you know animation for the eyes or the mouth and you can actually rig it to where you can flip between those anytime you want so if we wanted our character to talk we'd actually switch between two of these really small textures or, you know, a couple if we wanted different voice movements or different eyes or we wanted angry eyes or we wanted, you know, a screaming mouth and things like that. And remember, the face is really going to be kind of tiny on gameplay. I mean, if we're looking at an iPhone screen, it's going to be tiny. So the detail you get from a moving jaw, you know, although sometimes it may seem necessary, players generally don't notice. When... I was at Sony, there was so many problems with some of the games we worked on, and people didn't even care. Like, I'm talking like large, obscenely obnoxious problems. And the problems you think people are going to notice, because they're, you know, we as gamers and game industry professionals have, you know, an eye to watch this stuff, most people generally don't care. What they care about is if your game's running solidly, if it actually works. They rarely will even notice, you know, texture stretching or holes in your geometry unless they're very very obvious and especially if you're an artist you know this stuff's going to drive you crazy when you first start doing it but once you watch how other people in the games industry you know especially you know your senior artists and things like that do work and you realize the crap they just throw out there and nobody cares you realize that's how it should be done